Each week, American History TV's American Artifacts takes you to museums and historic places. And coming up next, we travel about 45 minutes west of New Orleans to visit Whitney Plantation in Wallace, Louisiana, to learn about the history of slavery in America. This is called the Gwendolyn Midlow Hall Alley, and in this memorial, we have transcribed the names of 107,000 people who were enslaved in the state of Louisiana through the year 1820. Um, this is based on a database that Gwendolyn Midlow Hall, a historian from New Orleans, put together, and that database ends in 1820. Um, there's talk now of extending it to 1865. But 107,000 people are inscribed here. We have just their first names, and again, these are mostly coming from sale documents. And then what we've also done here is uh, recorded um, little snippets from the Works Progress Administration slave narratives. So in this area we allow people to walk through on their own and just take a few minutes to reflect and read those names and those testimonials. This quote is one that I think is really um, evocative of something that's common um, in slavery. Uh, this is a woman named Josephine Howard and she says, they always tell us it's wrong to lie and steal, but why did the white folks steal my mammy and her mammy? They lives close to some water, somewhere over in Africa, and the man come in a little boat to the shore and tell them he got presents on the big boat. Most of the men are out hunting, and my mom and her mom, they get out to look at that big boat, and they lock him in a black hole, and Mammy says, so black you can't see nothing. That's the sinfulest stealing there is. I think that this is really important. This really expresses an important theme in enslaved people's lives because it was very common. Um, theft was common on plantations and people stole to provide for their families. They were given rations on plantations which were frequently not enough food to really sustain themselves um, and then were, were punished for it. We're told that that was wrong to steal but you can see that they had a very sophisticated idea of how they were stolen and how their parents were stolen and grandparents were stolen and they recognized that there was hypocrisy there. They also, a lot of enslaved people express this other kind of thing about theft that they didn't think that it was stealing to take a thing that they had raised with their own sweat and blood and labor. Um, so if they took a pig for dinner, they're the ones that raised that pig. So it's a really interesting um, kind of expression of that. And also this story about being tricked uh, with presents is something that's extremely common in um, hearing about the ways that people were um, taken in Africa. That's, whether it's a folk tale or whether there's truth in that, but that's something that you read about all over the place. Also, I just want to note that the reason why when I was reading that I kind of took it out of the dialect, something that's important about these Work Progress Administration narratives is that they were written in this kind of dialect um, and it's really, at the time, in the 1930s, this is really drawing on minstrel theater. And there are a lot of historians and um, academics who really think that the reason it was written this way is um, rooted in racism. Um, these people, uh, certainly, many of them had had no education, um, but more important than that were uh, Southern and had thick accents, as many people do even today. And so they were um, recording their accents in a way um, that they might not have done if they were interviewing white people. Um, and certainly the fact that most of the interviewers were white and most of the, um, and obviously the people who had formerly been enslaved were black, there's a strange kind of interaction between those people. So there are a lot, there are some researchers who uh, like to take it back out of that so that you can get to the heart of what they were trying to say instead of focusing on this dialect. But this is how they were recorded at the time in the 1930s, is in this kind of dialect. 